It's alive. It's alive. You gotta run it. Can't really test ride it like that. <laughs> okay, so here comes the uh, attempt to flush out the fuel line. Now you can see she's still kind of drippy and yucky. Uh, and the stuff that's in there is just nasty. It's almost like diesel. <laughs> it's so, so old and crusty. Um, I don't like taking these fuel lines off if I can avoid it uh, because these little metal clips, I've had problems with them in the past of uh, breaking and I don't want to damage this fuel line considering that lead times are so long coming from Japan right now or from any of the dealers. So my chance of uh, replacing this uh, fuel line if I mess it up are slim to none. So I'm trying to not uh, stress it too much. I don't want to stress the fittings. I don't want to goof anything up, but what I do want to do is raise it up high enough that I can spray a bunch of uh, carbon uh, choke cleaner in this line and kind of fill it and just let it soak down through there getting toward the injector uh, and I'll let it soak for a few minutes and then drain it out. Um, at least that's the plan we're going to see. This is what I did last time when I, I got this scooter years ago and it worked fine. But considering the, the terrible state of affairs that that uh, fuel pump and the pickup filter in the bottom of it was in, I'm sure it probably sent some debris down this fuel line. So, yeah, it would be smarter to go ahead and pull the whole thing, which means I'd have to pull the injector up here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, but um, you got to take this off. You got to take this bracket that's the support uh, bracket for the fuel hose. There's two or three other bolts. There's quite a few things you have to take off to get it out of there. So I'm going to try cheating and just uh, filling the line full of uh, carb cleaner and see if that works. If it doesn't, I'll go ahead and pull the injector and try to clean it all properly. Uh, yeah, there we go. Now my low spots are out of it. So now I should have pretty much a straight shot down to where the injector is. And let's uh, let's give her a, a shoot full. And I'm just going to fill it all the way up. Getting close. I think that's it. She's full. So I'm just going to let that uh, sit there and stew for a little bit. If I can figure out a way to brace that and hold it up here, uh, I need to go find a little catch pan to uh, drain this out into. I'm sure it's going to be pretty, pretty gross. Okay, so I went ahead and pulled the entire uh, fuel line and injector assembly uh, off the bike because I just couldn't get enough fluid down there uh, in the line to soak it uh, sufficiently. So I got a lot more in there this time. And you guys probably can't see the quality of the injector. Uh, it's yeah, it's a little smarmy, uh, a little bit dirty uh, on the tip. But of course, what really matters is what's behind the injector uh, spray nozzles. And this looks like it is a two-hole injector. You won't be able to see that on camera, uh, but it's a two-hole injector. It's not very big. so. You don't want those uh, little holes to get clogged up in any way, shape, or form, or you're not going to get enough fuel from this little uh, tiny, tiny injector. I don't even know what uh, what the flow rate or the CC rating is on that, but uh, I can probably look it up. Uh, so hopefully it's not too clogged up internally. Uh, the O-ring still looks like it's in good shape. Uh, it's still supple, so I'll clean out the uh, little bore there in the throttle body and uh, put a very light coating of uh, motor oil on this thing and slip it back in there and hopefully she'll fire up. We'll find out. Okay, so let's uh, get this tank back in there and get everything hooked up to it and hope uh, that uh, everything fires up. <laughs> um, I did have to take that fuel line off uh, because I just didn't feel like I was getting enough uh, uh, reach in that uh, fuel line, you know, enough... Uh, Enough fluid down in there to really clean it out, and it came out pretty gnarly. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it was it was nasty. So anyway, uh, filled it up, flushed it out a couple times. Uh, you can't really disassemble the uh, fuel injector from the hose without uh, messing with that metal clamp, and that's a really bad idea because it's a high pressure clamp. So I don't remember which screws go to which. I got a pile of screws. We'll figure it out. 
I think it's these short ones. One, two, three, and four. Looks like it to me. Uh, so let's just get this thing located roughly, loosely to stay in place while I work on it. And see if uh, everything goes together as anticipated. And now the shadows are starting to get a little long in the day. Uh, the sun is in my eyes at the wrong angle, so it doesn't help anything. Okay. Forgot one piece for the fuel pump assembly. That's the little lock that goes in over the top of the, uh, the fuel pickup. All right, let's see what we can do here without kicking all my screws and nuts and bolts everywhere. So, I don't know if you guys are on camera or not. We're going to find out. I'll get that thing tightened up proper when uh, I'm ready to take this thing for a test ride. But, uh, got the fuel pump assembly back together, the sender, all that stuff, all in one piece. Now, let's reroute these pieces where they need to go. And this has a uh, little bracket that holds it onto the frame here. I put that bolt back in the hole so I wouldn't lose track of which one that was. But let's just see if we can get the uh, the notches in play. There's a long... Okay, so you guys probably can't see it. I'm trying to get another camera in on the angle here. Uh, there's a slot here and a slot here. And those are how you uh, get this guy in and locked in place. And how... I did it before, I don't really remember. We're gonna find out together. Ugh. You gotta get it rotated just right and press down and in, and it unlocks and relocks somehow. Let me see if I can get a different angle on it. And then this little guy goes in over the top and just keeps it from popping out. I don't recall how I did this, so I guess I'm just gonna push. Yep, that's it, just push. Well, it doesn't want to go in. There it goes. Ooga. It's got a very tight O-ring in there. Okay, so that's that. And now, obviously, the uh, this is a three-legged monkey, so uh, the, the open side of it faces your, uh, your hose side of things here. And it just slots into this, and then that little uh, catch there locks it over the top. So just... Clickety doo dah. So now the fuel pump, uh, or the fuel line coming out of the pump is uh, attached. This is the electrical for the assembly. That's going to give you your fuel pump and your uh, fuel level sender. And that's that. So I'm not going to bother buttoning everything up at this point. What I want to do is uh, hook up the battery and put a little splash of fuel in there and see if we get this thing to uh, fire up. Let's find out. Okay, so the Navi's getting uh, fuel for the C3. <laughs> Got a one gallon no spill can sitting back in the basket in the back, the milk crate. And no, I'm not riding with any safety gear. I'm wearing a chest rig and that's it. <laughs> my battery on my uh, Navi is just dead as a doornail. I've been riding it off and on, uh, starting it and letting it run every couple days, but I don't know, it's really dying. Have to put a better battery in here, maybe a uh, lithium or something. Something with less self-discharge. Okay. Normally I don't like carrying anything too heavy back here on this because it uh, flexes a lot. But I think six pounds of fuel going about a half mile home shouldn't be too bad. Okay then. Fuel has come down about uh, 50 cents. Uh, so we're going to treat the little C3 to some premium unleaded. And I'm going to throw some Tecron in there to uh, clean up the uh, fuel injector from the inside out. So let's see if I can do this without making a mess all over me or the ground or anything else. This is a 1.25 gallon uh, tank. I'll go ahead and give it one gallon exactly. 
See if I can hit exactly one gallon. I'm at 9.96. Oh. Oh, look at that. That's Ninja. Fuel Ninja. Down to the thousandth of a gallon. 1.000. Good stuff. All right, I'll take this home. Get on there. Okay, back home we go. Nope, battery, she's too dead. Oh, wait. Yeah. Clunk, that was it. No starty. Gotta love that backup kickstart. Okay then, let's add a little fuel to this monkey. That's what we get. Still have to hook up my battery. I think my battery's toast, it died. It's been too dead too long and uh, it's not really taking a charge. So probably won't be able to get too much cranking out of it before it goes belly up. Uh, anyway, let's uh, put some fuel in this thing and hook up the battery, see what we get. If you guys saw any of that. Okay, so that's probably about a third of a gallon there. Enough that the pump will have plenty of submersion. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be able to, it'll be able to pull just fine. I'll put a little more in there. Okay, that's about a half a gallon in there, which will be plenty for what we need to try here. And uh, let me get the battery hooked up. Give us a shot. Okay, so I've got the battery hooked up, and I'm just going to back through and make sure I've got all of my connections checked. Uh, I've got stuff laying all over the place where it's not supposed to be because the uh, seat tray isn't in here, but I'll keep it up out of the way and make sure nothing grounds out. Just want to start this puppy and see how it goes. My battery is pretty much toasted. I've only got one bar on there. It's just not taking a charge. So uh, I'll probably end up kickstarting this in a minute if this doesn't work. Uh, all of my tail light turn signal assembly is disconnected. That's okay. Fuel injector is connected. Uh, I've got uh, hot to hot, ground to ground. The CPU or ECU is still plugged in. I didn't mess with that. I left it on the harness. The uh, fuel injector has been screwed in properly. All the uh, intake manifold stuff is screwed back in. I've got that in. I've got that in. This is still loose, but that's okay. I can finger tight it. And it's got a half a gallon of fuel in there. So let's see what we get. Make sure everything is good to go. Yep, okay. So, uh, turn the brights down to low. Engine start run is run. Key is on. I hear it spinning. Oh, and it just sucked fuel. Let's see what we get. Nope. Yeah, battery doesn't have enough juice to kick it or to uh, fire it up. So let's uh, see if we can kickstart it here. Give it a little bit of good love here. Two kicks and it started. Not happy, but it's running. That was probably the carburetor cleaner that was in the uh, in the injector. So it fired for a moment. Let's give it another, another hit here. Oh, I think it's gonna need more battery. Yeah. You could hear the, the fuel pump spinning as I was kicking, but that was it. So uh, I think I'm gonna need more battery for it. And I'll hook up my jumper over here and see what we get. This thing's acting up. 
cameras are overheating. It's warm out here today. I think this one's still recording. Let's see what we get out of it. Okay, so we're on jump charge now. Let's see if we can fire this thing up. I heard a whole bunch of air in the pump right then. Look at that. Just needed enough to get the air out of the line. That's all it was. <laughs> the fuel pump still had a bunch of air uh, that it was sucking up and trying to push through the line. But after that, fired right up. Cool. You know, I'll let it run here for a minute and see if I can uh, charge the battery. Uh, I doubt that the uh, battery's any good because the uh, Genius Noco charger over there that I have wasn't doing it. So I doubt that the electrical system on this will be able to, but yep, yeah, she runs. I just need to change the oil and uh, finish buttoning up the rest of the plastic. It's alive. It's alive. Got it running. Can't really test ride it like that. Okay, so those two are done. Uh, uh, ECU bolted on here. I've got the tray bolted into the frame. And uh, now, and yeah, the battery connected obviously. And now um, I'm going to, I think I'm gonna skip the side panels and I'm just gonna put the seat on so I can roll it around. The other project that I'm probably going to do is I have uh, the original rear cover, top cover. Uh, that's a little bit scratched up, and I think I'm going to drill that thing. Uh, there are four holes uh, that you have to drill for the rear rack. Uh, so I'll take this nice, clean, pretty one that's not scratched up off of here, drill the original one, put the original one on there with a rack. One's in. That one is in. Out of the way. Clickety go. Make sure I got the key. Don't close your key under the seat. Can't get it back out. Ha oh, ha. I can ride it. Find some zip ties for that mess of uh, wires there and I'm gonna take it around the block. Let's take this thing around the block. <laughs> Haven't ridden this thing in a while. Oof, man. At least a year and a half. Last commute video I did on it going uh, from here to the warehouse when it was parked. That's the last time it was ridden. Need to put my ball mount back up here. I have no floorboard yet, so foot position's gonna be a little bit weird. I have checked the uh, uh, antifreeze, tire pressures, oil, all that, it's all good. Woo. The seat feels Funky, spongy. Why is that? Oh, it doesn't have side support, maybe? I don't know. Ugh. Yeah, floorboard's weird. <laughs> what floorboard? Uh, unfortunately, my fuel sender is not working. Ain't that a bitch? Well, I guess this is a good shakedown because uh, I need to test it out. We all saw it move up and down, but apparently the sender doesn't work. That is no bueno. Ah, no bueno, man. Gotta know when I have uh, fuel and when I don't. I'll uh, pull the cap back off of that thing and make sure that the uh, fuel float is moving up and down. But, man, that's a brand new fuel pump assembly and uh, 
fuel gauge no worky and it's got a gallon of fuel in it i went ahead and uh, dumped out the rest of that one gallon tank uh, into it so oh well that's uh, that's a disappointment I'll run it around the block here and uh, bring it back home before it gets too dark so I can uh, pack up all my stuff that I've got sitting outside. Hmm, that sucks. So the fuel gauge was working a little bit before, uh, even the in as poor condition as it was in. I do remember it uh, going up to like the half mark uh, when it was sitting at home trying to get started um that sucks i can unplug and replug the connector down there and see if that makes any difference at all of course i don't want to do it while it's running full throttle go c3 go yeah i gotta fix that fuel gauge man that's a big letdown brand new uh how much was it 200 and something almost 300 dollars i think for that fuel pump like 286 it was expensive. I have to look it up. I don't remember. It was either high 200s or uh, right at 200. I can't remember. Uh, anyway, yeah. Fuel pump part of it's working fine. Sender, not so much. So I'll unplug, replug the uh, little wiring harness down there and see if that's it or uh, perhaps it's the uh, float itself. Whoa, hey, that front tire feels spongy. I know I put the right pressure in it, so I don't know why it's feeling spongy I'm gonna run it around the block here see if I can get a little bit of charge in that battery and uh, <laughs> there's a mattress that's been in the median back there for almost two weeks now okay well let's see what we come up with here Watch out, Grace. Okay, so let's see what we get here. Hmm. Something's smoking. A lot. A lot, a lot. That's not good. What am I smoking? Ooh, gotta shut it down. Oh, what? I got oil everywhere. Oh no! My dipstick popped out. I wonder what I was smoking. Well, that's the smell. <laughs> Gotta clean that up now.